What is going on, y'all? We are back with another Battlefront 2 video, and this is going to be the villains video of the Which Hero Should You Be series. Um, and I guess we'll get straight into the video. Now for our first Clone Wars villain, we have Bosk, and these are his three abilities that you see on screen. We've got the Dioxys Grenade, the Predator Instincts, and the Proximity Mines. And I also want you guys to notice that the uh, the normal passive ability that pops up below next to the star cards that says health on kill is not there for Bosk. The reason for that is Bosk will fully regain his health. Let's say you take him all the way down to, to one hit point, right? And you survive and you manage to get away from um, the battlefield. You're not taking any more damage. You regenerate health just ridiculously slow. However, it will always go back up to 600. Um, the max is 600, and there are no cards that will allow you to get more. However, it is nice because as long as you can get away, you can fully regenerate everything that you started with. Which, I mean, whew, that makes Boss one of the best heroes, in my opinion. Um, because you're not dependent on killing troopers, you just need to get away. Which uh, strongly encourages staying with your team, which seems to be a trend with all the heroes. And, uh, how, I mean, how you're supposed to play with them in order to survive longer. Now, uh, the three abilities that we talked about, the Proximity Mines, which you just saw me throw down, the Predator Instincts, which you'll see in just a second here, and the Di Dioxys Grenade. Now, the, the ability I like to focus on is the Dioxys Grenade, especially in Supremacy. When you get onto the Separatist ship like this, um, once you get back to the three generators for the ship there's just three hallways that the clones are gonna be running into and it, it becomes really easy to herd the clones and control where they're going to be going if you throw a dioxys grenade in one of the hallways because that eliminates their ability to push as a unit down that hallway so it allows you to i mean just really influence that game a lot more whereas uh dooku can maybe only fight a couple opponents at a time boss can fight probably around 10 to 12 if you really throw his Dioxys Grenade strategically. Another thing I want to talk about is his just amazing primary weapon. You see it's got this little red circle that goes around it and that means it's charging up. Once it gets to the very top again, that means it's fully charged up and you can typically insta-kill. I believe it's every class, heavy assault officer and specialist. You just won't be able to insta-kill the enforcers or the um, aerial units or of course the heroes. Um, however, it's just as good of a weapon if you hit fire. It is, however, a two-hit kill unless you manage to hit a headshot. But I don't believe the headshot works on a heavy. So I typically just go for a body shot on contact when I'm charging it up and when I'm hip firing it. The proximity mines are pretty good, but they I typically stay away from them unless I'm dealing with a heavy health unit such as a hero or an enforcer or even an aerial unit. Um, Predator Instincts is kind of nice. Um, it's just like the Heavy's Barrage, except it gives you contact explosive uh, explosions, and then it also gives you this thermal vision where you can clearly see everyone um, in sight that's an enemy. And I think that's going to do it for Bosk. Let's move on to the next hero. Okay, now for Dooku. Looking at his three abilities, Lightning Stun, Duelist, and Expose Weakness. I'll leave it up for y'all to read if you want to pause the video. And then he also has the passive ability, Health on Elimination. So, uh, Star Cards, I'll kind of leave that up for y'all because it's, um, it's really about personal preference. But, um, I mean, those are the three that I picked. I just, I work best with them. Um, Lightning Stun, I will mention the Radius. While it sounds like it gets, um, I guess, relevantly bigger, it, it doesn't. It just, for me, when I tried the larger lightning stun radius, I, I didn't like it. I didn't notice enough of a difference for me to take up one of my star card spaces with that. Um, I love the ability, don't get me wrong. However, I just did not agree with how much it actually increases it because it doesn't increase the distance it just makes it wider so you can still lightning stun people that are 
just as far away as without that star card. However, now if someone's further to the right or left, you can now shock them as well. Um, and I just, I did not agree with that choice for the star card. Now let's jump into his abilities and his just amazing lightsaber skills. So Duelist seems to increase his saber speed. So um, how many times he can swing his lightsaber and make contact in um, a, a certain amount of time. <clears throat> that increases. The damage of his lightsaber seems to increase as well. And then it, it seems to me that he can block blaster fire a lot more. So it won't take near as much stamina away if he has Duelist activated. What I like to do is I like to combine um, Duelist with Lightning Stun. And then I'll typically save Expose Weakness for the big heavy enemies. What Expose Weakness does is once you've activated it and you've targeted someone, that person that you targeted now becomes weaker to not only your damage, but also the damage of your surrounding teammates. So let's say you've got a buddy that's shooting him, um, that's maybe just in the assault class or something, and they're shooting him with a normal blaster. That enemy is now going to take more damage from your buddy as well as you which is just a nice feature and it makes Dooku a great uh, team player and um, again he's another hero that it's just great if you stay with your team you'll survive longer you will get better kill streaks, and your team is more likely to win if you stick together one more thing I want to touch up on with exposed weakness is I prefer to save that ability for the higher health uh, troopers so I won't ever use it on an assault a heavy a specialist or an officer I will typically go for the big heavy enforcers the other heroes um, I'm trying to think uh, I guess aerials have a little bit of extra health as well basically any sort of special troop that's not the default four that you can use without battle points so all the battle point troops I typically will use my exposed weakness ability on and then uh, using that ability is kind of like Darth Maul's choking and then force push he stands still for just a second while he targets that uh, that player, and um, that can leave you exposed to blaster fire as well as saber strikes. So again, I typically stay away from it unless I'm getting a big health player, such as this enforcer that you see right then and there. The last thing I want to touch up on is Dooku's three dashes. Now, the, the normal amount of dashes that uh, a character is going to have are two. That's the same for most heroes and uh, er, all four of the uh, the classes, Assault, Heavy, Specialist, and Officer. All four of those have only two of the dashes, but Dooku has three, and part of that is because of his um, character build. He is supposed to be one of the villains that is like a professional lightsaber wielder, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, he is supposed to be really good with a lightsaber, and the dash is such a key part of lightsaber fighting that they gave him three, which I don't want to say is broken, but um, it is quite a good advantage to have because that way you can charge up and have three ready, and you don't have to wait for the two to charge back up after you're used to. You've got a third one to rely on, which is just kind of nice, and it makes it a little bit easier to play as him. And that's going to pretty much do it for Dooku. Uh, let's move on to the next villain. Now on to General Grievous, who's got Thrust Surge, Unrelenting Advance, and Claw Rush as his three abilities. He also has that passive ability of Health on Elimination. Now I personally enjoy the star cards that give him more health. The um, Flesh is Weak, Sith Trained actually doesn't give him more health. Um, it adds damage to his lightsabers, but it reduces his stamina with each swing. So it's like 25% less stamina every time he swings his lightsabers. It does not affect his blocking stamina though, which by the way is almost non-existent. Uh, so if you thought, hey, maybe let's go block as General Grievous, don't. It, it's not gonna work and you're gonna die. Or, or go ahead and do it because I'm gonna end up killing you in that match right then and there because if I don't, someone else will. Um, Grievous has absolutely no blocking stamina. He will block a shot and immediately that's 20% of his stamina right there, just gone. 
That means he can block five shots, guys. And then his, his stamina's gone. Then he can't swing and attack. All he could do is use his abilities at that point, which makes him nearly useless. If you really need to deflect bullets, use his unrelenting advance and just stand still. Because you do not have to move forward if you are... Why am I stopped right there? What the heck was I doing? Anyway, you, you don't have to move forward if you're using his unrelenting advance. You can just stand there and block all blaster fire coming your way. That's what I do all the time. It gives me a chance to A, regenerate my stamina, B, regenerate my health, and C, figure out my next move. Um, sometimes it can backfire. Grievous is just like a quirky villain to use, um, and it does take some time to get used to him. But like all villains and heroes, his dodge ability, his dash, whatever you want to call it, that is going to be one of your keys to success with Grievous. Um, whether you are evading bullets, trying to get away from someone, making yourself hard to hit, um, that and jumping are the two biggest things that you need to use when trying to survive as Grievous. Another thing I like is his Claw Rush ability, because you can just run through as many enemies as you'd like until his Claw Rush um, is, of course, like the timer is up on it, because you can't just Claw Rush forever. How awesome would that be, but it would be incredibly broken. So, another thing that's good to do with Grievous, if you don't want to take that uh, stamina reduction when you're swinging your lightsabers, take that star card out of there and go ahead and replace it with the damage reduction for Claw Rush, because you get a 90% damage reduction with while Claw Rushing if you've got that star card up, and that just gives Grievous even more health, which is crazy to think about, because he's already got... What is it? 800 plus his star cards that make him less or more resistant to damage once a certain amount of his health is missing. And then it also there's one that gives him even more health just to start off with. I think it's an extra 100. Um, but yeah, with the combination of all that, Grievous is a tank of a villain, which he needs to be because man does he absorb some bullets. Uh, Grievous in the movies is of course a cowardly villain who will fight he'll take a ton of damage to his um cyborg like structure and then he will retreat that is exactly how you need to play him in this game you need to do a ton of damage take a ton of damage retreat and then repeat that is exactly how you will succeed as grievous and um i, I want to say get kill streaks but again it just takes some time like i died right there against bots um, now bots are a little difficult because they have AI that can just aim and hit you like they won't miss um, when they when they want to um, Players I do seem to find struggle a little bit when shooting at me when I play as Grievous as long as I am dodging and jumping in the air and just making it as difficult as possible to hit me I can get a pretty good kill streak going as Grievous um, the only thing I will say about him is I find a little difficult to I guess tip the scales or or uh, really support my team as Grievous. I, I tend to uh, run off on my own quite frequently and I don't ever seem to need my teammates to support me back there. I also find it difficult to lead the charge into battle. Like it just, um, Bosk can just herd clone troopers left and right and and make it very impossible to get through a certain hallway and things like that. And Gravis, it just seems like he's really a uh, he can fight a couple clones at a time, and then he needs to run away. And then maybe a couple more here and there, and then he needs to run away. I don't find myself changing the game too much when I'm playing as him, versus um, Dooku, Maul, or even Bosk. So um, just keep that in mind when you are selecting Grievous. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with him, and hell, your playstyle might even support Grievous pretty well. But uh, for me personally, I, um, I just don't ever see myself... Uh, doing too much to help my team when playing as Grievous, other than getting the casual elimination. And um, that's about it for Grievous, so we'll move on to our final villain. Okay, and last but not least, Darth Maul. Definitely not least. Man, do I see him getting used probably every single game of Supremacy I play. His three abilities are Furious Throw, Chokehold, and spin attack and he of course has that passive ability health on elimination i prefer his um his star card that allows him to take less damage from blasters because i typically only ever use him when i am playing 
in uh, Supremacy or Co-op or just pretty much where I'm always taking damage by blasters. I also really appreciate dice going in, and, or maybe it was EA. Honestly, I'm not sure who edits the game anymore, but I really appreciate them changing his furious throw uh, because it used to spin straight up and down, which made it very narrow and difficult to hit opponents, and now it throws sideways, as you'll see in the video, like that, um, which is really great. I should say vertically and horizontally rather than up and down and left and right, but whatever. Um, Darth Maul is a really great saber character, especially if you're just now starting the game and trying to learn how to use a lightsaber. He's really great for that. I think his one downside, well, I guess two downsides. One downside is his health um, at 600 makes it a little difficult to, well, rack up health because... 600 that ain't a whole lot that's like boss except Darth Maul doesn't have that ability to fully regenerate his health unless he's getting kills so that makes it a little bit difficult but another thing is his choke hold is very very difficult to use in time and know when to use it basically what it is is you grab them in midair kind of like Vader's choke hold and then you force push them away however that animation takes a solid second maybe even two well, during that second, you can't block any oncoming blaster fire. Um, someone can throw a grenade next to you, and it, it may even have time to go off before you can move out of the way. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage once you actually grab and choke hold the players. Like, it usually is not an insta-kill unless you've already slashed them once with the saber or they've taken damage by another opponent on your team. Makes it very difficult to use and time because if you use it and you're just standing there and taking blaster fire, that is now some health that you've lost and you need to go regain by killing opponents. I typically will only use it when I'm in cover or know it's only one or two enemies and I can get them both in the chokehold. I will rarely use it if I can't get both enemies in the chokehold, even if there's only two enemies. It just depends. Because the Enforcer Wookiee for the Republic side is a monster when it comes to eliminating uh, villains because once you get their middle ability activated you can just unload and even if a villain is charging them they can take a, a solid bit of damage while they're dishing out a lot of damage themselves and typically it can end in an elimination I can make a separate video on that but let's get back into Darth Maul his stamina is uh, I'd say relatively good I, w I don't want to say anything like it's amazing but um, it's for sure one of the best stamina's in the game um, it just it seems to disappear quite quickly when he is blocking blaster fire now when he is just swinging his lightsaber it doesn't seem to disappear at all very quick um, and then it does take just a couple seconds to recharge which is another thing that's uh, that I guess could be seen as a downside but if you know how to fight with a lightsaber and can get out of a fight for just long enough to regain your stamina, then you should be good with using him. Last thing I want to talk about is the spin attack that he's got. You just saw it right there. I used it to take out a Enforcer Wookiee, which is what I just talked about, the, uh, the dudes that can just murder a saber villain. I use it um, almost as often as a way of getting around as I use it as a way of dealing damage to opponents. It makes it semi-difficult to hit Darth Maul when he is using his uh, spin attack. I prefer it because it gets you behind opponents. Let's say you're having a saber battle with Obi-Wan or even Anakin, just either one of those two, um, and you can't seem to get past their blocks. You can do a spin attack and quickly turn around and slash their back and get a good little bit of damage right then and there. That's one thing that makes him very useful on the battlefield. It's also very easy to clear a room out if it's close quarters combat, like inside of that little tank that I was standing next to just a second ago. Once you go up in there, it's very easy to clear out enemies since it is close quarters combat. Um, I think that's going to be it for Darth Maul. Um, and I guess that's going to conclude this entire video. I covered all four of the uh, Clone Wars villains for this one and I think the next one I'm gonna go ahead and do the 
sadly, new three movies with um, Kylo Ren and Rey. I'll cover those six heroes and villains in my next two videos, and then I will move on to the um, original trilogy, heroes and villains. So uh, until then, I guess I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.